Today I'm going to show you how the Zoom 90 will track a passive prism in the real world with cars going by, reflective vests, people, bicycles, sun, reflections, just a good real world example. I've got the robot set four and a half feet above the ground, it's as close to the ground as I can put it on a standard tripod. Did that just so that every single car that drives by will prevent the robot from seeing the prism. Um, you can see it's tracking me up the street. Um, I'm behind this car. A second here with the car go away. And the robot automatically finds the prism and relocks on me. Uh, I'm going to walk behind a tree and another car. And the robot will lose me again. However, if I come back into view without pushing any buttons on the data collector, the robot is going to retrain on the prism and continue to follow the prism. So let's walk back down the street. There's trees and bushes between us and the gun. And you can see this is pretty standard tracking. Not a lot of cars going by. A few trees. No problem. It just requires me when I step back around the tree and continue off. I'm going to turn down the side yard here. Lots of trees between me and the gun now. And we're going to start picking up some background objects. The robot tracks me. It's got me again, but I'm going to stand by. Find the tree, it's not going to be able to find me. So I'm going to do a standard ATR search. This isn't a power search, it's just the standard search. And you can see it locked right back on the prism. And I'm good to go. Come back out to the street. And continue walking past these trees and telephone poles. So again, this is a passive prism. Um, there's no radios or infrared sources on it. It's just a standard 360 prism. I'm pretty close to the gun here, and you can see it still tracks me through the trees, no problem. And now I'm going to come out and try and cross. This is 11th East in Salt Lake City in front of our office. It's a fairly busy street. I've got a vest on, but this clearly will be the most dangerous thing that I do all day, is just crossing the street in front of the office. And now the fun begins, because we'll have lots of cars and buses and bikes passing between the robot and the prison. Let's continue walking down the street. Behind some trees and some leaves, no problem. problem tracking here because as the cars are going by I'm walking out from behind the field of view. But all I need to do is walk back to where the gun is pointed and it'll see me and automatically track on me. I just turned on the uh, EDM so we can get a measurement. Let's see a measurement. It's a uh, slip distance up here in the bottom right hand corner here. lost track, but we regrained tracking by just stepping back into the field of view. Now here, we're going to have a hard time tracking because I'm behind a tree. And the robot will lose me again. Let's do an ATR search. Immediately finds me. I'm behind the tree and then behind the leaves. All of this is going on with cars and buses and windshields going between the gun and the prism. And I'll 
track me and I went behind a car and it's lost me again. I don't have a high enough prism pole to get past the van that's to my right. The ATR search finds me almost immediately and that's a tough find there. I'll raise the prism pole up as high as I can get it but it's not going to track me through that vehicle. So I've walked back up on the sidewalk and we're doing another standard ATR search. Bam. Robot finds me. And I'll start walking back towards the robot. Find some trees. telephone pole. Again, all of this tracking is occurring with cars going by both directions, walking behind trees, pretty close now. Turn walk to the south in front of the office. And we walk behind this telephone pole. That pole's about 14 inches in diameter. And you can see no problem tracking you back and forth through it. I'm going to come up to the pole. One more pass. And I'm going to come right up to the pole. Hide the prism with my hat. And then walk up the street. Back on, you can see that I'm putting my hat back on, and all I have to do is walk back out behind that pole, and the robot will follow me again. Let's do that again. I want to walk up to the pole, hide the prism with my hat, sneak out of view, put my hat back on. Sneak back into view. And the robot picks me up again. Follows me through the pole. And take back up off the street. So as we walk farther up the street, the cars are in the field of view longer and longer as they cross because they're going through diagonally. But the prism dropped on the eye level. Up the street here. Again, there's cars. There's a telephone pole. No problem tracking me past that pole. even with the cars coming by at the same time. Walk up the street. Find some trees and some cars. 
sun's at our back now too. Now the robot lost me there because I walked behind a car just as a truck was coming by. I told the robot to do an ATR search and you just got to see the robot lock onto the front of a car and follow it down the street. Now we're going to do a power search. And that's a power search left and it's checking out a 25 mile an hour speed sign that's up the street from the office. Here's John. He's been in the background beautifully adjusting the focus on the telescope so that your image is in view. And the robot spins around, finds me, and locks on the prism. So we're good to go again. Keep walking down the street. the bus. No problem. Still got me locked. I'm going to walk around this telephone pole. Again, that's about a 14 inch diameter pole. Walk around again. Cars driving by. No problem continuing to track me. safely cross the street in a sidewalk. Now I'm going to have to drop the prism because there's some trees between the prism and the robot above the sidewalk there. Drop the prism down. walking back towards the robot again. If you've used other brands of robots with passive prisms, this example should be pretty impressive to you. Um, there's a lot of activity going on in the robot's field of view. There you just saw it, it lost me, it's tracking the headlight on that car. It's found me again. But these cars moving behind me, directly behind me, and the sun hitting the windshields it makes for a complex tracking arrangement. So I'm going to go behind a tree here and with the prism in the leaves the robot spins off me and looks out on the street. I'm going to do a search and finds me pretty easily. The prism's held down just under the tree canopy. Try that again. Uh, that's not going to make it though. That tree canopy is just too too thick to see through. Now I'm going to show you that I don't need to push a button and do a search. In this case, I close enough to see the robot. I can see the guide lights, and so I just walk until I'm centered on the guide lights and present the prism to the robot again, and it continues to follow me. So hopefully 
you've enjoyed this video and you have some idea of how great the GeoMax tracking really is.